UFC 302 takes place this weekend, and I'm going to be giving you guys my full card predictions, starting off with Andre Lima versus uh, this random guy. I can't even pronounce this guy's name, but I'm going with Lima. Thumbarell is his name. Uh, this guy gets hit way, way too much. He's too hittable. Uh, I think Lima is going to crack him. I, I saw what I needed to see. I mean, both these guys are undefeated. Lima has decent power for a flyweight. He's got some good kicks. I do think he's going to be able to defeat Thumbarell, uh, probably in the second round by TKO. Then we move on to Aylan Perez versus Jocelyn Edwards. Could give a shit about this fight, to be honest. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm picking Aylan Perez to win. Uh, I just think she'll win. I think she's probably the more uh, trustworthy fighter, but I do think this fight is just meaningless. I, I don't really care. Uh, but I'm going with Aylan Perez. Then we go to uh, Mickey Gall versus Basil Hafez. I'm taking Basil Hafez to win this 100%. Mickey Gall is pretty shit. Let's be honest. Mickey Gall kind of sucks. Uh, he's never done anything in his career other than beat CM Punk. That's like the what he's known for, which is pathetic. He got finished by Diego Sanchez. That's fucking funny, right? Getting finished by Diego Sanchez. I do think Basil Hafez will 100% win this fight. He had a good performance over J, uh, against JDM. I know that doesn't mean everything, but I think he's the more elite fighter in this matchup. I do think Basil Hafez will win. Then we go to the prelims, and we have... Uh, Nico Price versus Alex Morano. Another fight I'm very confident in. I think Alex Morano is going to 100% win this fight. Alex Morano is just more in his prime right now. He's he's won more more uh, than he's lost. He actually hurt Santiago Ponzinibbio in one of his losses. I do think he's going to defeat uh, Nico Price. Man, Nico Price is coming off a KO loss. I don't know if he could take punches anymore. Although Morano isn't really a power puncher by any means, I do think he's got more impressive wins. He's got a win over Matthew Semmelsberger. I think he's just the more consistent, more trustworthy fighter at this level. I do think Alex uh, Morano is 100% going to take this one. Then we go to Philip Rowe versus Jake Matthews. I'm blasting through this. I'm taking Philip Rowe. I'm taking Philip Rowe. I know people are going to be like, well, that's a bad pick. Philip Rowe has good power, man. Philip Rowe's pretty underrated. Uh, I do think uh, he's going to be able to beat Jake Matthews. Jake Matthews got dropped a lot by uh, Matthew Stumblesberger. I think Philip Rowe will be able to drop Jake Matthews, and I don't think Jake Matthews can take... I, I don't know. I don't think Jake Matthews is going to be able to take Philip Rowe down. I think Philip Rowe's takedown defense has improved. Uh, we saw that in the Neil Magny fight, and Neil Magny's a decent takedown artist. He gets some people down. Uh, I do think Philip Rowe will 100% win this fight. I think he's just the better fighter overall. Uh, there are some advantages for Jake Matthews, but I, I trust Philip Rowe to win this. Um, then we go to the next fight, which is between Grant Dawson and Joe Selecki. Grant Dawson had to be one of the biggest flops in uh, in like the last couple of years. This guy was being touted as like a potential top five fighter, and he gets KO by Bobby Green in like the first 20 seconds, I think. Uh, yeah, that's a terrible look. He beat Demiris Magulov, though. That's a very good win. I do think Grant Dawson will win. He's fought the better competition. Uh, I think his grappling's better than Joe Selecki. Joe Selecki just says, who the fuck is he be? I'm not going to pick you to beat Grant Dawson, man. You don't, They're very similar, these guys. I, I, I don't... I'm not, like, the big... I'm not high on either of these guys. These guys are just not that good. So, it's like one of those fights that's kind of close, but I do think Grant Dawson will outgrapple and outstrike Joe Selecki. I trust him more. Even though he's coming off a KO loss, I do think he will bounce back in a big way against Joe Selecki. He dominated Jared Gordon. I mean... These guys are just way better. I, I don't see Joe Selecki don't, like, being able to, not dominate Jared Gordon, but like, be able to beat Jared Gordon right now. I, just, I don't know about that. I don't really think Joe Selecki is all that, let's be honest. I got uh, Grant Dawson to win this. Then we have Cesar Almeida versus Roman Kopilov. I was considering picking Cesar Almeida. He's 5-0. and oh, And I was like, yeah, this guy's a kickboxer. Then I watch his highlights, and I watch Roman Kopilov, and I'm just like, dude, you're, you're going to lose, dude. You're not. And I get Roman Kopilov's competition before... The Anthony Hernandez fight was not that good, but Roman is just too fast. He's more experienced uh, in MMA. He's got the grappling to go to. I think I think he could take down Cesar Almeida because uh, he's you know been training this way longer than Cesar Almeida. Now uh, I could be wrong. This was, this is one of my uh, less least confident picks on the card because I just think Roman Coppola is a little bit overrated. But I'm 100% gonna take Roman Coppola to win this fight. At the end of the day, I do trust him. I think. No matter what, he's the better striker. I don't care about some kickboxing record. I don't even know. Maybe Kopilov comes from kickboxing. I don't. I don't look to that. I look to the octagon. I look. I look uh, how you look there. So, I'm picking Roman Kopilov to win this fight, 100%. Then we go to the main card, uh, and the first. I, I believe it. Uh, who's opening up the card? I believe it's Kevin Holland uh, versus Mikhail Alexeychuk. No, no, no. It's Randy Brown versus Legend Zaleski Dos Santos. Okay, I'm actually picking uh, Zaleski to win this. He's 
uh, being doubted way too much going into this fight. I think he's got a more impressive resume than Randy Brown. I think his performances have been more impressive lately. I think going to a draw with Renat means a little bit more than carrying Muslim Salakov in the first round. I just, I think Randy Brown is just kind of, ha he has these close fights. And I know Zaleski also does have close fights. But I have a feeling Zaleski's just going to pull this one off. I think he's going to be able to get this one done. I just trust him. I think he's got more durability, uh, more impressive resume. Uh, I think he's going to be able to beat Randy Brown. Randy Brown makes it way too close against people that I don't really rate that much. And I know Zaleski, you could say the same, but I think Zaleski's a little bit more, you know, almost more excusable. I, I feel like he's just better than Randy Brown overall. So I'm going to go with Zaleski Dos Santos to win this probably by a close decision. Uh, he's a little bit older, but I don't care. I think he's still going to win this fight. Uh, then we go up the card to uh, Kevin Holland uh, versus... No, wait. It's Jailton Almeida versus... I'm mixing it up. Jailton Almeida versus Romanov. I'm not going to keep this one long. Jailton Almeida by whatever the fuck he wants. He's going to finish Alexander Romanov by strikes in the first round or submission. Uh, Romanov's a big dude, so he can maybe escape the submissions. I'll probably go Almeida decision, actually. Because Romanov's probably going to gas out. Romanov has terrible cardio. He got... Uh, I don't know. He, he always gasses. I could see him doing good early and then gassing. He's fat as fuck. I don't, I don't see him beating uh, Jelton Almeida. Uh, Jelton's coming off a knockout loss, so people are like, oh, how is Jelton going to react? I don't trust Romanov to do what Curtis Blades did. I, I'm going to pick Jelton Almeida. And, and Jelton Almeida was ragdolling Curtis Blades. Let's just see how it, how it is. Like, Jelton Almeida was winning that fucking fight. Jelton Almeida is very... A little bit underrated now just because he lost to Curtis Blades. But, so I'm picking Jelton Almeida to win this fight by decision or third round. I'll say a third round submission. I'll say a third round submission. Probably a rear naked choke. But I could see a decision win for uh, Jelton Almeida. Then we go to Kevin Holland versus Mikhail Alexeychuk. So many fucking people are picking Mikhail Alexeychuk. What are you fucking doing? Kevin Holland is going to make this look not easy but relatively clear. I do think Kevin Holland is going to dominate this fight. Uh, I really fucking do. Mikhail Alexeychuk is so over like I, where's the why are people picking this dude? kevin holland is coming off a loss to mvp because of striking oh boohoo he lost to kevin uh lost to mvp on the feet he lost to wonder boy on the feet he lost to jdm he had moments in all these fights they weren't as dominant as people make it out man and i i do think he's going to be able to defeat alexei chuk alexei chuk is not like good okay and he's not a grappler and even if he has kevin holland's takedown defense has improved and he's coming up from welterweight he did better at middleweight when he was here uh, at middleweight like he did better in that division he has a win over fluffy hernandez i think he actually does better at 185 i think his power is better there because uh he's not cutting the weight i think he's going to be able to defeat mikhail alexei chuk by maybe a some i could see a submission for kevin holland in the second round i'm gonna go kevin holland by second round submission probably a darts choke I could see a decision win for Kevin Holland, though, but I'm going to pick Kevin Holland to win this fight by second-round submission. Then we go to the co-main event between Sean Strickland and Paulo Costa. I'm taking Sean Strickland. So many people are saying Paulo Costa's pressure is going to be too much for uh, Sean Strickland. Paulo Costa wasn't really pressuring Whitaker that effectively, okay? Like, he was doing good in that fight, but he was getting jabbed every time Whitaker wanted to land something. He usually did. Costa's defense is just not all the way there, and he's not— this power puncher that uh, some people think is. I feel like people have come around the narrative that he's not. So I don't think he could get the same respect, and he doesn't mix up the grappling like Drickus. So I do think Sean Strickland's going to be able to win this. The cardio as well of Strickland's better than Costa. Uh, I don't see Costa winning this, man. I, I don't see it happening. I think Sean's boxing is a little bit better. I think his defense is better. I think his cardio is better, and I don't see Costa being able to take this right to the ground. So I'm picking Sean Strickland to jab Costa to pieces uh, and then break him. I, I, I'm picking Sean Strickland, but... You know, Paulo Costa is a tough matchup for him, but I'm take I'm definitely gonna take Sean Strickland to defeat Paulo Costa. Then we go to the main event between Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier for the lightweight title, and I'm taking Islam Makachev to win. I know people probably wanted a big old Dustin Poirier prediction. Look, it's it's probably not gonna happen. I understand Dustin is kind of a toughish matchup because he's southpaw. He could find some shots on Islam Makachev. But let's just say how it is. Dustin looked pretty bad in his last fight. He looked flat-footed. He didn't look himself. And he hasn't been looking himself since the Charles Oliveira fight. I don't think his takedown defense is good enough. I don't think he's going to be able to submit Islam. Maybe he can crack him. I know the new gloves can mean some problems for Islam Makachev. But I, I could also see that working to Islam's favor uh, in some ways. I think he could crack Dustin with the threat of the takedown. And... I saw an interview recently, and Dustin just is overthinking it again. He's going to overthink the fight. He's, he, he's, he's overthinking it too much unless he's playing games. I, I don't think he's going to win this fight. I just I just don't. I think this is going to be his last fight probably. 
Maybe he'll stick around for a money fight, but I think this will be his last title shot. He will lose uh, probably by second round submission. I'll say a second round submission for Islam. I could see it happening in the first, but I think Dustin might look better than some people think in this fight with the takedown defense. But I do trust Islam Akhachev to eventually get him down. Although Islam is not the best wrestler. Okay, let me make that clear. Islam is not the best wrestler. I could see him still taking down Dustin or... Being able to effectively pressure. People talk about Islam getting knocked out by a southpaw. You got to be uh, real. Okay, look. Islam Makhachev was not the fighter he is today. And Islam Makhachev was fighting like an idiot. I don't think he will do that. I don't think he's underestimating Poirier uh, too much. I, I don't I don't see how, like, he he's saying all the right things. I don't think he's underestimating. I think he's just very confident in himself, which is normal. I don't think he's necessarily completely underestimating Dustin. I know he's calling out Connor, but... We've seen people do that and win fights, so I don't see it as a big deal. I'm definitely taking Islam Makhachev to win this by second round submission. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter at LostWMMA, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.